Texas Steampunk Connection coming to you live from various parts of Texas in our bunkers and airships and whatnot. I am Flavio as usual, and with me as always is Thax, the Gentleman Adventurer, and Jack from Steam Chest, and we have Master Blue Stocking. Say hello, Woo! guys. Hey! So once again, we are here to talk, oh, probably about Steampunk most likely, because that's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. Good evening, everybody. You've Thank reached the Texas you. Steampunk Connection again. Uh, yeah. It's Tuesday night. And uh, let's see. Uh, St. Patrick's Day was just this last Friday. It was great. <laughs> it was I didn't even realize it was happening until it was over. <laughs> oh. We'll see. <laughs> I couldn't forget because uh, Lex was out teaching Iris step dancing at a winery locally. Oh, so we went out there, had green beer, some stone fired pizza, danced for two hours. That sounds like a we wildly loud tired. and dangerous time. <laughs> it was. It was actually not that loud, and it wasn't wildly dangerous either. Because uh-huh. I mean, it was. It was a private event of like I don't know. It actually, had like twenty, forty people dancing. It was actually pretty a lot wow. of people. Yeah, yeah it was a big deal. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, so we probably be doing that next month for something else. They they really like her there. So sweet. Yeah. Sometimes. That's what Lauren we're doing. And Rita are here as usual. Thank you guys. And Johnny Steverson he also says hello. And so, uh, as we've mentioned every episode since he started, he is hosting the uh, what. Gal- Galveston Galveston Steam Steam Punk Steam Punk event. <laughs> the thing we're going to. The thing first we're all going to be at. Yeah. Punk Festival on July 1st. Buy your tickets. July 1st? Or no, April 1st? April 1st. Because I'm going in April. <laughs> we're going to the after party <laughs> July. Is is for April. So. This week is, man, is, is messing with me. Yeah, so we have... Yeah, it's 12 days away, man. You need to get on. You need to get, you need to get the plans done, you know. Buy them tickets. Yep. Well, speaking of which, which tickets are we buying, Fax? You bought one already. I, I, bought, I bought mine I bought already. General admission. Okay. Uh, right, that's they the also one have here. a uh, 3 o'clock tea 3:30. in the train. 3, 3.30? Excuse me. Yeah, that's the tickets we got was 3.30. Yeah, the 1 p.m. is sold out. I am, so. I am poor and trying to hoard my money. But You're uh, not going to the tea on the train? We'll be outside looking through the windows. Yeah, we were actually we we're talking about it. Depending on how tall the train was, we were going to sit there and stare at you through the windows and like be Aww. drinking other things and like you know make having more fun than you were having. I decided we decided to do it because Emery. We figured maybe oh, she would she'd really get a yeah get a kick out of doing the tea you know the fancy tea and it being on a train. We thought yeah, she might. Oh, got to be on a train. It's your first yeah. your first train tea is a day. Let me tell you. <laughs> I found out today. The first that, real uh, tea party. Our friend. Uh, DJ Argo uh, will also be on the 3.30 train. Uh, so we'll be staring at him, too. Well, this is not the 3.10 to Yuma. I mean. <laughs> uh, Rita will be in there, and Lawrence will be outside. And the Lawrence will not. There Lawrence will be, out with, he will be out with us having a better Y'all time. Y'all can have one of, one of Lawrence's very full and hefty beers <laughs> while we're on the train. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that. I like you setting up a date for him already. I'm I'm, I'm okay with this. <laughs> Just saying, oh. opportunity, you know. <laughs> oh, it'll be good. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. You get out of this house. It's getting and and Frenchie and the Punk will be there. Oh yeah, yeah. Are they are yeah. they playing twice? Is that what I'm reading? They're playing like once in them like early evening and then again in like late in the evening or something? I think so. Well, they came all the way down. Johnny said the trains days. are tall. So the trains are tall. Y'all might need to right. get like... All right, Max, grab your soapbox. We're going. Stools. <laughs> so I think I'm the largest, so I'll be on the bottom. Jack will be on my shoulders and Lawrence will be on the top. Three steampunks and a trench coat. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Wait, was it was 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 Lawrence wearing a, a kilt or was I just was he wearing pants last time? He was wearing a kilt, yeah. I okay, think so. Yeah, that might be a problem. You may have That's to be on the, the middle. <laughs> oh, oh. 
That's why I'm wearing a hat. I that brings a whole new dimension to the situation. That's what I, we're that's not going to like, Wait a minute. If my Moving memory on. serves, this could be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, so, how's drink. everyone doing oh, with the up and down weather? <laughs> well, oh. other than the fact that breathing is not important, apparently, I'm okay. <sighs> it's killing my brain. I was asleep until like 20 minutes ago, and I'm like, oh no, I gotta get up. <laughs> yeah. It was drizzling all the way home for me. Uh, oh, it was work, work and back. I don't know if it yeah. rained all day. Uh, it just seems like it, Britain broke across Texas today. <laughs> it never I mean, really got it's... above 72. Like, it never got to yeah. 72. And uh, we got I, like spitty kind of rain this morning, oh, yeah, no, but just, that was it. Was it. Like, dro- it was drooling on us all day. Yeah, and it's just like sitting in the air, uh, making your head hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to the awesome. right. Okay, let's get the drinks. Drinks. We need to get the drinks. Let's get yeah. away from the. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to drink my headache away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some people are very affected by the barometric pressure. It sounds like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not my friend. I can do really hot or really cold, but the the bouncing back and forth. As long as it's steady, I'm okay. But the up and down, I just I don't do well with. So, so I'm drinking to pretend it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you drink hard enough, you don't have to pretend. It just does not does not affect you anymore. It just goes away. It's what you need to do. Well, I'm those, I'm, I'm drinking blood. my usual. So. The nose. What are you drinking? <laughs> Just uh, those, those I'm, so I'm drinking my usual. Blood. So, y'all do your the thing. Or, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, the apothic. Uh, right. <laughs> Something is Warhammer 40k. Although oh, that'd be some metal. Yes, the gothic apothic. <laughs> Sorry. The gothic apothic. <laughs> Sounds like a great metal band. <laughs> <laughs> it will be soon. I am drinking something <laughs> slightly, uh, well, ex- exceedingly special. Um, actually, okay, slightly yeah, exceedingly good. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Just Explain slightly exceedingly. exceedingly okay. Well, exceedingly means it beyond excess. No, but didn't you say slightly exceedingly? Well, I mean, we did. All right, did. so we picked up a <laughs> we picked up a mead. We got ourselves some Ooh. Viking blood. Oh, oh that, that is good. Yeah. Yeah, it's Danish. Dan, 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 Danish blood or MJ Danish, yeah, they sell it. Mjold, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they sell that at Harvest House. Hibiscus and hops, and yeah. it tastes that is, I don't taste hops oh, much, dude. but the hibiscus is awesome. Yeah, it comes through, and yeah. it's just like a it's like you pour too much honey in a hibiscus tea. Isn't it like 19? percent Oh, it's something stupid, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Because they sell it in glasses like this big at Harvest House. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got the, I got this, and it's like a pretty penny, and uh, we we're drinking yeah. it out of like, you know, little things. Yeah, yeah, you don't need a whole lot. No, no, no. <laughs> Considering that, like you said, you only need like three ounces to have an entire beer out of this stuff. So yeah, and, and, you know, a decent beer. My brother's oh, looking yeah. for a good mead, and. uh he he found one uh, that I will not mention the brand of, and he got it home and opened it. It tasted like band aids. Mm. <laughs> oh! Mm. <laughs> and he he sent a message to the, to the meter. He said, "I I don't think this was a good batch. Um, it, it not, something not right with it." So they sent him another bottle. Okay, so we I it more band aids. <laughs> well, <laughs> just. That's just how they bring. Made it. bring can, can you get one of these? Because we must try this now. <laughs> we must try the band aid. Science. Us, we must tell try us when this. the broadcast is over. Yeah. <laughs> Put I, this on the Patreon channel or something. I don't know where his <laughs> bottles are now. Um, I'll have oh. to bring it out another day. That's. Lauren, Lauren says he's got the dragon's milk. Of course he's got the dragon's how milk. Does he he just milks it? that dragon every time. Every <laughs> Really? <laughs> what? In his kill? <laughs> He's in his kill, milk and dragons. Just <laughs> bent over halfway, you know, at the side like this. Really big cistern. <laughs> See, now dragon you're making, making snort, quit dragon it. noises over here. I'm not totally sure what noises a dragon would make being by being milked, but you know. I can go either way, <laughs> really, I'm sure. Can you can you give us an example? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Don't worry about it. 
Oh, it's been a week. It's only Tuesday. Yeah, what? right. <laughs> <laughs> God. So my coworker uh, was up in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, and was told by another coworker, "You have to go by this brewery and you have to bring some stuff back." I've never heard of Martin House Brewing Company. Okay, but they're out of Fort Worth, and tonight I am having. King of Kings cake. Ooh. Oh. Which is Ooh. a King's cake inspired ale. So it's going to taste like plastic babies? Uh, <laughs> it's going to, uh, I hope not. Does it have a little plastic baby <laughs> floating in it somewhere? Uh, maybe. Babies and band aids? We sit there drink it and suddenly you start choking because you got the baby in the back of the throat. Yep. <laughs> you win. Hey, I'm just thinking it doesn't have like, Glitter in it. <laughs> the beads fly out as soon as you open it up. <laughs> okay, it looks like beer. Ooh, All right. That's a good color. That's that's. There you go. Unfiltered. Nice. I was going to say that is very cloudy. Uh, that, that's, it almost looks like tea. Okay, you know, good tea. Tea you can't actually see through, or at least it's steeped enough. It's hard to see through. It it does have a a, a very sweet scent. Like frosting sweet. That's kind of weird. Yep. Frosting sweet flavor too. Ooh. I, I don't know what to think Is that of this. Good? I mean alcoholic frosting. It, oh, the it, world think of next. It, it falls into the <laughs> dessert category. It's a little odd for beer. Um a little odd, but, but it's that's good. That's kind of how I felt about the 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 red velvet cake one. I'm like, this. Yeah, is like, that's I don't true. Know. Yeah, it's like yeah. you poured a. It's like you poured a beer into a cake, and somehow it doesn't clash. But it's it's, it's odd to think about. Um, also, Rita has Lacroix Key Lime, but what's more important right now is that Lawrence has um suggestions on milking a dragon. So. <laughs> You have to be very careful not to make the tet Thor. It's very <laughs> gentle. Yeah. And sing it while milking. Yeah. So yes. there you go. So what do we sing? What, what would you sing? <laughs> I know, what ex- I'm assuming you would hum to Imagine Dragons. It's the only thing I can come up with off the top of my head. It's a little radioactive. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> There's a book in here somewhere. I know it. There's a story that can be written about this. Oh. Erica's uncle, Eagle Legends opening, maybe. From Oklahoma, they had cows. And uh, she told me one day he was milking the cow and the cow kicked him. Mm-hmm. And, and he kicked it back really hard. Oh, no. No, that's not. <laughs> I, that is not the proper response. He was on the wrong cow. side if it kicked it. No. I, I not my cow, not my bro. You have to kick the cow hard because otherwise it's just not going to notice. Cows yeah, basically. Really as much as they, they weigh, you kick them, it just feels like a love tap from another cow. It's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> you really have to like exert. Like, I worked with horses and horse smacks you with his head. Doesn't think twice about it, but you want him to stop smacking you with his head. You actually have to haul off and like Explain to him, no, you don't do that to me. Are we talking about like sure Tom Cruise it. punching a horse and far and away? Is that what we're like? I've no wish to fight you, and then he punches the horse. <laughs> I was thinking Arnold Schwarzenegger punching a camel. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> Get out of the chopper! <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. No. Sorry, that was my bad impression impersonation. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't. <laughs> oh hush. Thank you, oh, Lawrence, for continuing this line of this line of conversation. I appreciate Dragon your effort. Dot com slash about dragon's milk. Oh, apparently there's a Game of Thrones theme thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there you go. Learn how to milk a dragon on dragonsmilk.com. <laughs> or just wait. Just Dude, instant message milk. Lawrence. Apparently he is a master milker of of, of dragons. <laughs> Interesting. He would love the attention. Sure. Lawrence is our dragon master. Yep. Yep. 
<laughs> so anybody see anything cool on the TV? <laughs> I'm, I would. I want to be. I, you know, here's what we need to do. We need to make a list of this because I want to. I want to refer back to this in future episodes. Just as a, a mm-hmm. random moment, we'll be talking to some other person that's on the on the stream about their book or whatever, and be like, you know what? I'm sure we. we I have to figure out a way to crowbar it in, but I'm going to. What's your stance yeah. on milking dragons? It's like, <laughs> so your book. Your book seems very light <laughs> on dragon milk. I know a man you need to talk to. <laughs> Are you for make or sure against? It's authentic. Because when you're writing a book, you need to make sure everything's authentic. I know a workshop you can go to over there at Steampunk <laughs> November over the over the you know over the break. And then there's this guy you need to run into named Lawrence. He's an expert dragon milk. Is it a kilt? He's, he's very he's gentle. Very gentle with the <laughs> he starts off with being very gentle. He gives the first lesson the first five minute lesson for free. He teaches you how to hum a couple bars and uh, <laughs> Shows you the proper way, the proper stance, <laughs> clothing. A bucket. Okay, I, I'm done. I can't go any further with this right off the top of my head. And this is how we celebrate our Patreon supporters. <laughs> we love, love you all very life. much. <laughs> we give you random names and give you random jobs. You have jobs become part of, we'll the story. Back on the <laughs> part of the story. You are right? forever a part of our narrative now. Thank you. That's what I used to do with the Steam, with the steam Chess people. We'd write them into our are we send out a letter of kind of the stuff trying to basically build a story around the stuff we're sending out in the box and we'd bring in people who are making the stuff and some of our supporters in there and have cameos it was real fun <laughs> we may have to have reading corner with jack where he reads one page of that stuff every now and then you know when we run out of things to talk about well, i'm going to force the conversation i hear you you've been watching, <laughs> you've been watching uh, shadow and bone season oh. two Yes, yes. Out. As of I, as of I. It is I freaking awesome. And um, yeah, we I've only in like episode two ish, maybe three. I was passing out, so I have to watch whatever last episode I was watching because I was exhausted. But the I love how the story is going. I still love how they're balancing the two story uh, the two story arcs very well. Now there's three-ish well they've kind of recultivated one of them back into the fold so it's, it's kind of broken into two now but it's there's the yet again the main high story arc with the big wizard things going on and then there's the the main like mob characters doing the mobby things and um it's filled with swash and buckle lots and, of swash uh, and buckle swash, and swash, swash, swash. um bombs yeah, that uh the the uh, the the uh, the crew of 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 uh, heisty thiefy people Th- those are my favorite. <laughs> the main plot is okay, but the it, uh, it does feel very much like they're a family that lives in like like eighteen people who live in like a two bedroom house. They all just have to get along with each other because like just the sheets around the bathroom and they're just walking by, you know, just whatever's going on. And he knows everyone's name. He's calling them out. If you've ever read The Lies of Locke Lamore, uh, which I highly recommend, it feels just like that. Mm. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, a, a series that's, that I highly recommend. Um, Lies of Locke Lamore. It's, it's, it's all, it, it's, it's not steampunk. It's more uh, 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 fantasy medieval. But... But so good. <laughs> okay, I will okay. finally watch it. I swear, because I need to watch this and I need to watch Carnival Row. I've just, it's been easier to hide in stuff that I don't have to think about. But I swear, next time, the next episode, I will watch, I will have all of this watched. I promise. And actually, Better. the author, I like the author, Lee Bardugo. Because um, she's got another series, the Hellbent series. And it's really, oh, and she also just signed like a 12 book seven figure deal with the her publisher it's not all books in the same universe it's or same series it's 12 diff 12 books across different series and like it's like seven no eight figure there's a lot of figures it's well over a million yeah it's well it's like multi-million dollar 12 book deal that she just signed so yeah no she's i mean she's She's pretty prolific and she's made them a lot of money with this series and like i said the hellbent series is um it's about secret. It's about secret societies at Yale, 
and demons and magic and it's really really good and there's some steampunky elements hidden in there but so i will i i i, I swear i make this promise i will watch it and i'll watch carnival row because i still haven't finished that either yeah we were, we were starting that and then suddenly the mandalorian pops back and i've, I've been watching carnival there's, row i, I think I'm about half TV? Of there's a lot of tv there is. I don't have a lot of time for it either. I get it. There's a lot of other things I've been wanting to watch. Like, I don't think we've even finished Better Call Saul yet. We've been trying to do that for like two years. <laughs> we keep yeah, that's the, not we can't really watch it with a kid in the room because it's a little violent sometimes. Or the um, a, like, a, a little. And I mean, it's not. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. So that's one reason we're just like, we can't watch it when he's in the room. And he's usually in the room with us. So we have to find other things to watch. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> We don't get to watch that one very often. However, we got we did get to watch um, that guy's other movie. Um, I'm nobody or nobody. That's what it was. It's the oh. same guy who played. Yeah, he. Bob yeah, Bob Oden- Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. Is, yeah. Yeah, he plays essentially. I'm gonna say he. Yeah, he's he's kind of it's his version of like John Wick to a degree. And um, yeah, I heard that was really it really was good. Really good. I will admit, I think I enjoyed it better. Than John Wick in a lot of ways, and and I don't say that John lightly. Wick, I did y'all hear about Lance too. Reddick? Uh-uh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That made me so. I I rewatched some of Fringe last when I was like I sat down and had to rewatch some of that because I just yeah that man had a swagger and a style and a man tone that you knew who yeah. it was when he got on stage. Very very unique individual. And he had just finished filming as Zeus for the new Percy Jackson in the Olympian series that's supposed to come out oh, next year. Hard. I'm wondering because I kept reading he had just finished John Wick 4. He had just finished like the 12 episode Percy Jackson. He just finished doing a voiceover for a game or a cartoon or no, the mm-hmm. Hellboy cartoon. The new yeah. Hell, he's Hellboy in the new Hellboy cartoon that's coming out. <laughs> like, you think he, he just worked himself to work. death? I, I wonder. Like, so, is that I'm trying to think. He was only 60. There was a was actor 60. who played it feel like that, far, that far away, does it? Uh, it's like oh, 13 it's... years for me, <laughs> it's not that far away. It was interesting. It's... I was reading something else here recently. The villain in the Street Fighter movie back in like the early 90s or late 80s, the main Raul villain, Julia. the main villain guy, um. The only reason he took that role is because his children and his grandchildren liked that. You know, they knew of that and he was actually fighting cancer at the time. And so he did it. He took that part just because he wanted to be a part of, you know, their universe. Yeah. And the only way he really knew how, because he didn't didn't really have another way of integrating with it. So he became the bad guy. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I'm just going to take this all the way. And he did. I mean, you know, 11. <laughs> he had a great time, I, I imagine. Yeah, so yeah, that was that was sad because Lance Reddick seemed like one of those actors that he's just he was a really cool dude off screen. He was just chill and peaceful, and his Twitter account was always just very love and you know peaceful and it's yeah. He's one of those actors you don't want to hear that he's done something he shouldn't have been doing because mm-hmm. he just, you like him so much. Yeah. But you know, the ones you know. I've met, there's only one that I've met that I didn't really like the way, like it wasn't a, it wasn't a great experience, unfortunately. And I think it was just, she was having a very bad day and I'm going to, I'm going to roll it off that way. But the lady who played uh, uh, Troy on Star Trek. Oh no, she's, uh, no, Marina, she, no. She just, she, having, she just hates doing it, oh, I guess. She, no, she's one of the people that said that Tex, when during the Texas freeze that it was our fault. Oh, never mind. For oh, well. our poli- that's the, and she also... That's the when only Texas actor COVID, I've ever really run into that had issues. No, she's not nice. When the Texas COVID numbers spiked again, it was our fault and we should all die. Because we voted oh. in this... Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I I kind of understand the position of what she's saying. It, but no, she said she fault. was. If she was like, just she chose violence. She was just mm. mean, 
because yeah. there's gerrymandering and a whole lot of other things that go on in the state. It's not as yeah, and simple the fact that we're as like, it's close on like yeah. our races all the time now. So you know, yeah, it's. She we're took really a very split. reductivist approach, so it wasn't. Yeah, it's so it easy to take that approach. I, I've been tempted mm -hmm. to feel the same way about Florida recently. I know, I know that's same. That's right or appropriate, but but there's a mess down there, and you know, <laughs> somebody's yeah. gonna be late. There's a mess down yeah. there. Yeah, it's just it's Ooh, it's, it's not that it's just like anything. It's not as simple as voting it's the problem is the way that the voting the lines are rigged throughout yeah. the state and you know you've got to be able to understand that so which is also why i try to stop making fun of florida because they're in the same kind of boat that we are as far as that goes it's just the only reason we know about florida like the F florida so much is because the with the sunshine law so like every crazy thing that happens that someone gets arrested for gets put in the paper that's why it's always florida man <laughs> That's why we always hear about it's Florida man and not a name is because there's a rule saying you're not allowed to use people's names. Even but all the wild. Convicted. Yeah. So but it's all always the wild Florida man. Are always, yep. That, yep. Yeah. They publish makes, everything. Yeah. So it's makes just, it actually more you know, funny, I think. We don't need to be reductive about what's happening in certain states because it's not a lot of times it may be a situation where you just. We're doing our best. <laughs> We're trying. I'm just I'm just trying to get money in the bank. It's hard. Oh, no, maybe no. out of the bank now. I don't know. And not you know, and not freeze in the winter. See, yeah. Speaking of the banks, yeah. maybe putting money in the bank is a great idea right now. It's oh yeah. 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 Three major banks now. And one had a so, shot, you know what the Swiss bank had a shotgun wedding with another Swiss bank because the government said they had to, but was also willing to bail out both banks. Fun, yeah. It's so Victorian, <laughs> very. Yeah, you know, we're living Victorian. on the edge of an apocalypse, y'all. So did nah, anybody just a financial there? downturn. Did anybody got show and tell? Anything like that? Oh, not tonight. A little. A little. I got, like a I got little. A little. What do you got, Jack? I'm, I'm trying to find show us it. what you got, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring see it here. <laughs> Bringing it. Present. Uh, share screen. And that's that's new. I don't like the new thing. Present. Me just moving our squares around. No, no, he has to be the first <laughs> square. To, it, Stuff. <laughs> oh, entire screen. That's the button I want. There. Sure, there I go. Now here. <laughs> Throw that, one of these. That, Aha! Here we are. Oh, what really? <laughs> this this. Is, oh, where'd it go? Wait, is that no. your? I was like, is that your background? Or are you showing us this? What is that? No, this? This is this is something I found. I've, I've been, okay. Because of the company I work for, um, which is I, I run into a lot of I run into a lot of funny things that are plumbing related, and uh, this one popped up in a thing, and I'm like, all right, I have to go find where I where this came from. And so I scoured the internet a little bit and found that a steampunk home design is a web is a Facebook page, and oh, I mean okay. they got some good ideas, but this is actually I think the best idea they had. I actually want to go build this. <laughs> I know it's dumb. Good God. <laughs> but, I mean, he's got some, they got some others. Like, you know, this this is actually fairly handy and useful. And look, you know, it's made of pipes and this is a lamp. And uh, that's a robot with a plug and a switch. So, you know, it's still it's useful. USB, it's a USB uh, charger. A USB charger plug, you know. I'm pretty sure you just plug it into the wall. And you have a switch and everything turns everything on and off. Fancy. You know, good shelf. You know, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's some it, of I've seen some of these on Etsy, yeah. But most of the time, it doesn't look... It looks overdone or underdone or something. It's a little this, much. <laughs> this feels a little like they, they hit the right angle on it a little bit better. Just the fact it's... Yeah. It's not overly done, but it's useful. And it has the aesthetic. Okay, that's a little weird, but, you know, hey, you know... Actually, I kind of like that. I totally put that in my office. 
Yeah, exactly. Kind of on that. There's a red one. <laughs> now, this one vaguely reminds me of the one from um, Mystery Science Theater. I think it's the red Yes, one. Crow. Crow T. Robot. Yeah, yes. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is an interesting tiny little lamp because these are these are spacers okay. that you use for like, I wasn't sure yeah. if that was a lampshade or toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's actually really tiny. That's maybe like a two inch, two to three inch tall. Okay. And this right here is very small because these are like half inch spacers. Is that a new doorknob? <laughs> so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I have right off. Um, see if there's anything else. Oh, I do have I do have this little thing I found. It's, it's cute. Oh, it's polymer clay. My mom makes jewelry. Yeah, polymer clay. That stuff is wild. My mom mm -hmm. makes jewelry out of that. I didn't. Yeah, you can do anything with that stuff. That's oh, yeah, so no, cute. Is fantastic. It's adorable. I was sent this just a few moments ago. Yeah, Lawrence uh, sent that. Yeah, it's a nice looking dragon. It is. How big is that? That looks like okay, eight inches. Wow, that's actually pretty decent size. Looks like my dragon in Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does look like the, yeah. the mountain worker. My steam scale incinerator that I fly around on. Ew. <laughs> I think I got a big blue. I got I got a Japanese dragon without wings on it that swings that sw swings around. I got a bunch of other things. The best part of that whole game is the fact that I can play Pokemon in there. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Thax, what'd you bring? Oh, fast pump. Okay. Um, Wait, okay. before we move on, I have one more thing, apparently. Oh, yeah, oh. okay. I'm being told. <laughs> Everyone knows that I, I am a, I'm a big <laughs> proponent of computer games. And we all know of the Frostpunk one, right? The one that has like this, the, the city that's wrapped, around, like the last city on Earth that's in a crater and they like huddling. Around the one that the I played, yeah. I played yeah. it for like a week and it was, yeah, it was oh. hard. <laughs> well, they're coming out with a two. Yeah, hmm. I knew they were coming out with a second one. And it's supposed to be even yeah. more in-depth and more impressive and more all this stuff. It's so hard. To... It's hard oh, to no, very hard. Very I mean, hard. yeah, you've got to balance really between do you want child it. labor laws or yeah. you want to have certain people die because they can't make enough food. You know, these I, mean, I didn't know if there's any cheat codes for it. I should have looked. There are plenty of things you can go on the, on the uh, workshop on Steam ah. to help out either make it more difficult, more interesting, more sarcastic, sarcastic and exotic, and also I didn't get it through Steam. I think I got it. Steam? You can actually still get it, put it through the Steam no. Workshop. Um, if you got it through probably like uh, Good Old Games or uh, GOG. I think yeah. I thought I think I got it through GOG. Maybe I'm not sure. You can Ca yeah. You can still link it through your Steam into the Steam account um, okay. with the GOG information. So even if you so bought it's it not off like this. So it's not like SimCity where I just type in Rosebud and I get all sorts of money. <laughs> These days are not really quite that way. Uh, essentially, <laughs> modules were made for it, and Steam has an interesting way of uh, setting up a game file so that all that all the workshop stuff goes to like a centralized spot in the game. So most games are take that into account when they write it now, so it's easier for workshop integration. So it's not like you got to go take this exe file. You got to open it up. You got to rename line thirty seven. With something strange. If I can't just type something in, it's still too much trouble. <laughs> if the game freaks out, you got to reinstall it because you messed up somewhere. Don't yeah. make me work for my cheating. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, there's another game called uh, We Need to Go Deeper. And it's about a mad scientist in a submarine, and it's Ooh. a game where you slowly go lower and lower into the into the abyss, trying to get parts for your machine. And um, it's on sale right now on Steam as well. So um, I think like, Lawrence, it's Lawrence Frostpunk is a is a city builder. It's not an F, it's not a first person or an MMO. It's a city builder where you've got a, it's a yeah. It's like a dark version of yeah. SimCity mixed with. Um, games yeah. like Rimworld or Dwarf Fortress where you have your, you actually do have characters and people or, or decisions you make really change the way your um, yeah. Yeah. ecology of your group works. It's a little more involved than SimCity. Yeah. You know, you got starving children, so 
that added a new dimension. <laughs> Do you, you put you your starving children to work? Yeah. Or you get people who Do get you hurt bury the bodies in the accident. snow, or do you burn them? Yeah, well, if you bury them in the snow, you can eat them later. <laughs> no, it was because you could use them for prosthetics. That's what was killing right. me. You can, yeah. <laughs> if you bury so, them in the snow, then you can use their limbs later. I was like, so oh my god. in the real world game I play, yeah, if, if you're playing yeah, on like a... This is terrible and awesome. Freezes it outside. You can you get raided. You can shoot the raiders. And um, <laughs> yeah, you, the bodies freeze. There are things you could do with that. With, with that, yeah, it's not great. It's, but it's interesting. Into... They're they're interesting choices, <laughs> which are preparing us for later. our future. <laughs> yep. It does have a lot of Alpha Centauri vibes. Um, that one was also a very good game. Um, yeah, I liked Alpha Centauri. So that's what we that's what we got. Or I got. All right. Thank here. you. You're that, that was awesome. I, I try. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I'm coming from the uh, glue some gears on it and call it steampunk kind of direction. <laughs> but uh, as a kid, didn't you always want a a uh, go kart with a real yes. motor in the back yeah. yes. around, even if it didn't have a license or any knowledge of driving? <laughs> you, just wanted, you just wanted to steer with bloody abandon. So now that we're grown-ups and we can do such things, I would like to introduce you to oh, the no. cycle cart. Uh, let's see. Extra Share screen. Here we go. Yeah, that one. Boom. Okay. So uh, I'm here on cyclecarts.com, and it is it is a, a weird little club of... <laughs> So far, I think it's only only gentlemen, but there's no reason why you. you... Hey. Oh wow! Oh, oh, I've seen these before. Yeah. So they're, they're tiny, so tiny cars. cars that you build. You cannot buy them. You have to hand make them yourself. Um, yeah. They've got a little motorcycle engine and motorcycle wheels, and everything else is cobbled together junk. <laughs> you might find at the Home Depot or well, they're fancy the soapbox Depot. racers. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I'm super excited about these. I don't know how to weld or build anything <laughs> like this, which makes me want to do it. Um, There's probably a YouTube video for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm sure, but I don't have like the machine or any of it. But I love the idea of the. They're they're based on 1910s, 1920s European race cars, you know. Yeah, they're very cool. That uh, the idea is you you find one of these classic photos of, of one of these classic cars, and you build not a scaled down version, but a a caricature of of your inspiration, you know. So if you yeah. feel ridiculously, you can just print off a picture and slap it on the side. <laughs> uh, if, if it comes to that, I suppose. <laughs> but I've always been turned on by like, you know, those those old style racers where the mm -hmm. the wheels are outside the carriage and yeah. you know, this, this engine and you're strapped to the back and you just go. You just wear your, your little goggles and your driving hat and your Got your little scarf yeah. blowing out in the wind. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, I found a I found a website that sort of directs you on how to how to start building it. Buildyourownracecar.com. Oh no. Ooh. You know what this thing needs? A little more power. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there and, you go. It, it, you know, it's got some some basic, you know, breakdown, and then here's books that you should go buy. <laughs> wow! Books. Um, yeah, it it. I'm, I'm super excited about this. Um, so far, most uh, cycle cart racers are up in the northwest, but there are like individuals all across the world who are building them on their own, and they you know voyage up into Washington once a year to race them. How do you carry one of those with you? 
Does it come uh, apart? Trailer, I'm guessing. Well, if you're not, if, I mean, do you like airship it, or do you just like you mail it to yourself there. over here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, do you I, mean how do you get it from overseas? Yeah, thankfully, I don't have to have that problem <laughs> <laughs> because the, the whole the whole car, from from what I'm reading, you know, shouldn't cost you more than two grand for parts to put it all together, and you have to build it. So it's it's very approachable. Something mm. one of the things I like because I'm poor. <laughs> and, I'm assuming two grand, and that counts like all your tools and everything too. All the whole, whole up tooling of it, getting to that point, because like you don't need a whole lot for this, really. Um, right. Like you said, a lot of it's found parts, and like I'm assuming you have to buy the wheels. You'll have and... to find 17 inch uh, motorcycle wheels, which are not common, and uh, yeah, uh, a motor, um, some steel or or wood or whatever you're going to build it out of. Yeah, your frame. And uh, hopes and prayers that it stays together. <laughs> a lot of glue. That's cool. Glue. Yeah, I'm looking at these yeah. now. These are, uh, yeah, the Google image search. There's some really cool ones for the, wow. Huh. And uh, there's a there's a Facebook group of <laughs> Arts North America um, that I, I follow just because, you know, I'm fascinated by it. And they often post, like, pictures of real cars from the period just to get inspiration from Let's see if i can find uh something legitimate some definite historical parts there i don't think this car even exists no that one does not exist but <laughs> I, want it. It could exist. I want it hard <laughs> let's take an airplane and turn it into a car it reminds me of something I saw in an anime. Um, yeah, no, yeah, it does actually. The last something or other. I don't know. Oh it's yeah, it does look magic. like the last yeah. exile stuff. It does look like something there planned is. from the last exile. Yeah, last exile, just, exactly. Yeah. Just knock yeah. the back wheels off and make it fly. Yep, basically. <laughs> Very but cool. It's a van so ship. I don't know if any reason you couldn't build this within the rules oh. of the of the thing. There are rules. It's a little large, but other than that. Well, you'd have to, like, make a, a much scaled down version. But, you know, yeah. as, as far as covering it, you could put the front wheels inside of a hub like that, or mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, pull up the one Lawrence just shared a link for because that is awesome. That is... Yeah, that is excellent. <laughs> Uh, cycle cart. Oh man! Yeah, the steampunk three wheeler. Oh, <laughs> that is super cool. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if this would yeah. count as a cycle cart, but I'm loving it. Yeah, I really like that. It looks like fun. Yeah, so that's the that's a, my report. Um, Very cool. Flavio uh, and I would talk about going to ACC and learning to weld pretty much every year. <laughs> we never did, <laughs> um, but now, like I have now, I have two brothers in law who are both interested in learning to weld. Like one of them bought me a book, How to Weld, which I've cracked <laughs> open, but. You know, strapping it to the side of my head didn't help. Um, yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could learn by osmosis too. If we could live by, if we could, if we could learn by osmosis, blue stocking here would be big brain. <laughs> blue stocking, oh, which you had to be in college for this long. <laughs> yeah, just, just absorb everything in the library. Start but, yeah, that would... <laughs> Thanks, Lawrence. That's yeah, that's cool though. Yeah. I don't know. You should maybe, I mean, you know, else, you could take it to Steampunk events and be awesome. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You pose with yeah. the Texas Steampunk Connection vehicle. Yep. The Flavio Flyer. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. 
So huh. that's what I was. I, I was looking for stuff to talk about. You know, going through uh, um, the steampunk missives today and not finding anything. I'm like, have I talked about cycle carts? Not that I can remember. I need to. These are cool. So cool. Uh, I don't think they're road legal <laughs> at, at all. Um, but the, the thing about this, there's this little tiny Washington town that allows them to have this event every year where they let them ride on the city streets. Like they cone it off and they have an event where they can zoom around and, and do the thing <laughs> uh, for one day. Uh, another thing about it is, is, is there's a culture around the cycle carts where it is a, a gentleman sport. And I don't mean yeah. men. I mean, it's gentlemanly. Yeah. There, there's no like strong drive to win at all costs. If there's somebody coming up behind you who's faster than you, you let them by. You're not like yeah. jockeying uh, for for position. It's it's civil. It's very civilized, and and everybody's yeah. there number one to have fun. The racing is is more amount of showing I, off the vehicle. I want to speed around. Yeah, because because they're so small and they're so close to the ground. Even though you're not going at tremendous speeds, it feels much faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, so you're getting a real like thrill ride experience of racing which sounds awesome i want this very much sounds like well, we need to go go-karting i was gonna say there's a whole internet's worth of instructions for you buddy start making right. one and, and i mean I like if you don't if it doesn't than... require that much capital you know right. just just knowledge and time neither of which i have <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jack brought up go-karting, and I know there are <laughs> spots in town where you can like rent a go-kart and do their private track, but it's not the same. Because no. yeah, you didn't you didn't build it, and you, you didn't soup it up and and tune the engine yourself, and all, all the I don't know anything about tuning engines, but it must be fun. <laughs> the guy I who like works on the motorcycle all know. the time. You know, so their revving his motorcycle engine <laughs> seems to have, have a lot of fun figuring out how to tune his engine, whether he knows yeah. how to or not. Too. My first husband was a shade tree mechanic. He had a great time with it. He, I mean, he wasn't good at it. He <laughs> took his his. He had an eighty one Ford F one fifty. It was a three on the floor, or no, it was a three on the tree. And he tried to turn it into a three on the floor, and he put the gears in backwards. And then when we were driving to Mississippi, the whole thing fell out on the Mississippi River Bridge, along with our drive shaft. But he had a great time. <laughs> same, it's the same situation, but but miniaturized so that if the whole thing falls it's apart, it's a lot on safer. You, you have your own. You have your regular car to drive home. You're not dropping nuts and bolts on the highway as you're because we had people behind us and they're like, and they got this was before cell phone. They flagged us to pull over and they're like, there was nuts and bolts flying out of the back of the yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, and like this was like ninety six, ninety. This was ninety seven. So yeah, it's not like they could just call us and like, oh yeah, they had to wave us to get off. Yeah, it was bad. So this is much safer, you know. And now there's YouTube videos that you can watch to learn how to do this stuff instead of just cutting a hole in the truck. <laughs> We're going to figure out how to do it ourselves. It's going to fit a certain way, right? It can only fit one way. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I have watched a lot of auto repair videos and uh, most of them I'm like, like, that was complicated. I am not going to do that. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. I know you say you don't have any time, but I mean, it's not like this is a time limit on this thing. This is just something you can, because that would also be a gentlemanly, gentlemanly, you know, thing. Just piddle around with it on the weekends, you know, may never finish it, but it's just something to do. So my wife's ex uh, was one of these car guys who had a broken down car in front of the house at all times. So she's a sensitive (laughs) <laughs> I mean, no, I no, can, I, I can understand. I, yes, I can relate. I yes, want, absolutely. I not mean, want another piece of crap in front of the house ever. To to be <laughs> fair, this would not be in the front of the house. It's smaller. I mean, as as an as <laughs> an argument point, and... 
However, <laughs> don't you already bike. have a bike that you can't get tires for a motorcycle? Do Wait, you do? No facts. Did we ever actually get tires for your for your bike? I it, it's not a motorcycle. It's just a bicycle. But yes, the tires are fixed. <laughs> so we could do. Or we can rig up rig up the drive shaft. Oh, no. <laughs> you can pedal it. <laughs> Just start building around it. He's like, you know what? I, I hate this. It's a bad idea. I'm going to sit here and drink my beer. I'm strangely intrigued. No. <laughs> I'm just saying it sounds like it might be fun. You know. I, I think so, too. It, it'd yeah. be more fun with more people. Hence, I'm sharing it with you guys. Yep. I I would love to to participate, but the the you know the however the the, the six hours between us would make it a little hard to. We meet up in Waco and we weld together, <laughs> at like a, at a at a random like pit stop somewhere. Well, not pit stop, I guess. Okay, I once I finish my dissertation and I and I and I'm done with all that, then I'll need a new project. So <laughs> start figuring out there what we go. need to do. <laughs> Get it set up. We teach you how to fiberglass. <laughs> it's a whole new skill set. <laughs> oh, you fiberglass your dissertation over the whole thing. Make that the, like, the body bit. Have like all this. We can set up speakers so that we can play my dissertation as we drive around. Oh yeah, boom box out the back. Like like the. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> so this thing is already really out of proportion. So we're going to have to make three slots for people to sit in. It's going to be a big thing suddenly. Like <laughs> the in three tandem. of us just tooling around in like, it. Like in tandem. <laughs> like a tandem bicycle. <laughs> we all got little wheels. <laughs> I'm going to need to be monkey in the middle, though, because I am very graceless and have no balance. So I'm going to need y'all to hold the bike up. And I'll just look pretty. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's okay. We can work with this. <laughs> Give you, we'll give you the the, the, the the plastic cup and the wine bottle, and you can sit <laughs> there and just like try to drink while we're driving and just spewing all over me in the back seat. <laughs> uh, Thax, I think Rita's volunteering her um, her yard for your car. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a drive for me to go all the way up there on the weekends to tinker around and drive all the way back. Literally drive down there, make one tap weld and go home. <laughs> all I'm hearing here is I can't, I can't, I can't. Come on. Yeah, where, where's the where's this uh, will do attitude? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, there, yes, ma <laughs> there is no I in team. <laughs> Unless you start really badly. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have a project for next year. We're going to start the GoFundMe soon. We'll be raising funds. <laughs> hey, I'd just be happy if anybody who's hearing this and it gets excited like I am could st start building their own. No, I think it's uh, awesome, and I would love to do it. I just, like I said, metalwork. Yeah. Uh -uh. I, I, because teacup I, racing I, is for chumps. We're, we're going. We're not, going. <laughs> I'm not trying to put you, you know, up against the wall to get get working on it, but you're doing that to me, so maybe that's fair. Hmm. Mm. ADHD, you give me something that sounds like a project, I'm gonna want to do it. <laughs> that's the problem. Maybe, maybe we can also give uh, Steampunk November another idea. They need a racetrack now. All of a sudden, there's room. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine us having a dirt racetrack? Let for that use thing? space. Yes, I thought about that, but yeah, a dirt I've on. On, oh wait, as muddy as it usually is when we're there, unless it's frozen. I've thought about that every time I've gone. It'd be awesome. Oh, the mud. Be awesome. oh god, yeah, we would oh, literally as we are now. If we're just, we're just, yeah, yeah. You'd need the, the driving coat and the goggles, and that would be just <laughs> get the big, big gloves with the big, big mantles on them, like that. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's an immersive yeah. experience. <laughs> it's gonna immerse you for sure. Steampunk <laughs> mudding. Yeah, well, it's like when you go to a Gallagher show and box you have to wear a raincoat money. if you're on the front row. There you go. <laughs> so box mudding. Sudsy mudding. Yeah, you can come up with a word, but you can make this work. 
Mm. Ah. And hey, look at that. It is nine o'clock. <laughs> it, is. Oh, it is. It's time to wrap it up once again. Um, we started a little late because we were having technical issues because I'm on a new computer that I am still stealing from work. <laughs> but that means I don't have that that's that script I often read. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing it live. As they say, oh, no. doing a live. Oh no! Um, All right, the oh, live Riley. Let's go. So, uh, <laughs> Texas Deep Fun Connection is brought to you in part by J.R. Seeger and his book, "A School for the Great Game," uh, which is about uh, a, an Indian school where the English upper class class learn about spy craft and. Kung Fu and all kinds of groovy stuff. Clearly, this is not the script. I like how you said upper crass. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like upper it. Crass. <laughs> but it sounds really cool. I, I have not read it yet, um, but it is on my list. Uh, it The School for the Great Game is, is on Amazon. I, I'm looking at it as we speak. And it should be, should be a, a series called the Steampunk Raj uh, series as, as he continues to write. So uh, check him out, J.R. Seeger, A School for the Great Game. Uh, we're also brought to you by Fair Treasures, uh, which is a, uh, a an online store that sells uh, female presenting uh, costume uh, for for rent fairs and uh, steampunk events and uh, all that sort of thing. Uh, by our friend uh, Kitty Vincent who is uh, working at uh, Sherwood Forest Fair right now. Her, her store is out there. Uh, or you can go online to fairtreasures.com. That's F-A-I-R-E, treasures. Uh, and she's on Etsy. Um, but since it's fair season, she might be a little slower to respond than usual. Just, uh, you know, Bear give her. her a little time while she's, while she's juggling all of these balls. <laughs> um, she's not going to Galveston, is she? Because of the Sherwood? Probably not. I mean, she's okay. literally a hop, skip, and a jump from here. I but she needs employees. Know. She might be able to. I, I don't know. We'll have to ask her. Yeah, I need um, to ask her. Because she went to Steampunk November and she was doing TRF at the same time. True. I don't know how she does that, but woo. Um, <laughs> we also want to thank our patrons. Um, Rita and Lawrence Allen for their generous uh, pledge and uh, um, Jenny and Ryan Shaver who are, who are uh, supporting us and, and keeping the lights on here. We appreciate everybody very, very much. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that basically winds it up. Is there anything else uh, we want to uh, cover before next uh, what, two weeks from now? Oh. No, in I mean, two we'll weeks from now, we'll convention. be, yeah, we'll be covering that'll the convention. Be, that'll be the fourth. So the convention will have happened by then. Buy your tickets. Meet us at the Galveston Steampunk Convention, Steampunk Event Festival. We'll be there. We'll say hello to you. Uh, we'd love to meet you. And then we'll talk about you on the fourth on our next episode. <laughs> Become one of the, the, the growing businessmen of milk of uh, dragon milkers <laughs> oh and the first there. official the first official episode of my dissertation is out the so dissertation podcast is out awesome Ooh, awesome you go listen came out uh the i don't have the it's anxiety in the archives .com. That's okay. and it's I, on I, all I, the I, podcasts it. <laughs> huh? it's you everywhere i'm about to run it <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hand this off to Flavio so he can uh, uh, take us out, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. So, once again, thank you for listening. You can find us again on uh, Facebook at Texas Steampunk Connection for any comments, questions, suggestions. If you know of something happening, Steampunk, that's happening soon, we can put it on our calendar on our Patreon, um, as well as the, the list of over 100 comics and graphic novels, uh, Steampunk and Weird West related. You can also email us at Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com. And we're uh, a streaming podcast, Texas Steampunk Connection.podbean.com. 
And if you lose it on Facebook and you want to watch a remake, a rerun of this show at any point in time on YouTube, you can go find them on Steam Chest. <laughs> and although we've made many, many jokes about Twitter, <laughs> you can look for us at TX Steam, Steam Connect Zen. One. Oh. Twitter. I never use it. I never look at it. I don't know. I don't understand Twitter. Yeah. So yeah. Once again, thank you very much. And until next time, mind your mind gauges. Your gauges. There's a story because there's always a story. There has to be a story, you know, and I'm talking about libraries, so I can't not tell a story because they mean too much to me. Libraries are filled with an infinity of stories and a fair few stories have been written about libraries. These fictional stories often focus on the mysteries that libraries and archives have hidden away and only a select few are allowed to access these mysteries. The same can be said of real-world academic libraries, where only the privileged few can access the research they need. Examining and analyzing fiction that has been written about libraries and archives can help us to confront the anxieties that surround real-world institutions. My name is Elizabeth Hedrick, and this is just what I'll be doing this year on Anxiety in the Archives, my podcast dissertation. Over the course of the show, we'll discuss social and cultural anxieties around libraries and archives, and we'll learn some truths about access and privilege. We'll also take a deeper look at how traditional academic writing is changing and evolving, and what this means for students, and for the brave advisors who are taking this journey with them. It's going to swallow all of us before the end of it, I know it is. (laughs) Well, we're not going to let it swallow you, but if it has to lick you, we might (laughs) Release the Kraken! So join me on February 26th, 2023, for Anxiety in the Archives, my podcast dissertation. It is so good.